Welcome to Dads at Dark with your hosts, Casey, Mike, and Dakota, featuring Alex and Tyler. All right, here's here's a question. Would you rather have seen Metallica move forward with Cliff Burton still alive for bass and Dave Mustaine as lead guitarist, or prefer to still have Megadeth by themselves with them splitting up? Metallica. Because no, see, it would be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to see the progression because of the Kill 'Em All album. But to not have Megadeth in, in your life, I mean, you don't get Holy Wars, you don't get Symphony of Destruction, you, you, don't, you don't get Sweating Bullets, you don't, you don't get anything. But that Kill 'Em All album with Dave Mustaine writing basically ninety percent of the fucking shit on there, especially the Four Horsemen. I mean, that's an epic album. It put him on the fucking map. So my question is, my question is, would would you rather see more Metallica with the original artist completely with Dave Mustaine and Cliff, or do you like it how it is now? That's hard. Perfect case scenario is. The original band stayed together, and Dave still got to do Megadeth as a later on solo project. Yeah, I was gonna say side projects and stuff. In a perfect world. Now, I can see. Yeah, in a perfect world. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, didn't a lot of Megadeth songs come from like a little bit of uh, distaste towards the members of Metallica? Yes. Oh my God! Yeah. So like, I feel like there wouldn't have been that energy. It would probably would have sounded way different, but it still would have been neat to see like just how it sounded, what it would be. It's almost yeah, the same question you know. as though like I I know there's not a lot of Foo Fighter fans out there, but it's the same okay. concept there. If Kurt didn't die, you would have never got, got Foo Fighters. Now, do you rather Kurt die to get the Foo Fighters, or would you rather see more Nirvana shit come out later in life? Nirvana, Pers- for sure. Yeah, personally, it's not that I don't like Foo Fighters. I'm just, like, really neutral with them. I don't think they're bad by any means, but I don't think they're really anything all that spectacular. They're just a personal bad. opinion. So, and me personally, I like Nirvana more, so I'd prefer to see Kurt still here and making music. Interesting, interesting. But I'm telling you, Courtney did it. Courtney had it done. To have Kurt being killed? Yep. Yep. I, in high school, did an entire report and dug into a really, really, really deep rabbit hole with that one. Here's another off-topic. Well, similar. Elaborate. Just just before you elaborate on that, another quick question. You don't have to go into, de- into depth. Would you rather... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, not rather. Who do you think was a better guitarist for their time? I was going to say it's a party with that question. Dave Mustaine? Or Dimebag Daryl. Dimebag. Dimebag. I know I have to say Dimebag. Don't get me wrong. Dave Mustaine is phenomenal, and that dude can absolutely shred. But Dimebag was doing shit that was just off the wall. Like, some of the noises that he made those guitars make were just nothing you would expect to come from a steel guitar. A lot of those noises were based around <clears throat> uh, effects that Eddie Van Halen would do. Surprisingly. You know, actually, I read that, I've read that somewhere, too. Yes. Eddie Van Halen's like a fucking forefront man for, for crazy sound, sound effects. Like, making his guitar sound like, like an elephant and shit. He just did crazy shit, but I think he pulled a lot of inspiration from Van Halen. But, I mean, he invented some of his own little techniques to make that 
those whiny like like fucking nice. <laughs> like okay. cut out. Okay. <laughs> would you rather have? Would you rather? Yeah, actually, would you rather have Van Halen, or would you rather have Motley Crue? Oh, oh man, uh, just get rid oh. of both. I'm... No, fuck you. Oh, I mean, oh that's I mean, disgraceful. Your mom's gonna, gonna have... piss. How do you we're not like have... Motley Crue? I hate Motley Crue, but if if we're if we're I really gonna Motley pick Crew. if we're gonna pick between the two, Motley Crue's a hair band. I don't think they're inspirational at all. If anything, you get more music. Who's the that... guy that dated Pamela Anderson? Oh, I mean, Tommy, Lee. Tommy, Lee Tommy Lee is going to come over there and slap you with his massive dick. Tommy Lee's, Tommy Lee's, <laughs> Tommy Lee's trash. Like, like, here. You don't get all these great guitarists influenced by Van Halen if you only have Molly Crew. Molly Crew doesn't, they don't invent anything. That There was a hair band that was, you know, they might as well have been a boy band of rock in the 80s. I mean, I essentially mean they they're were, terrible. I feel like and a lot of when it comes to Van Halen, when you if you want if you want to talk drum tracks, all you gotta do is listen to Hot for Teacher. That the beginning drum track is so iconic. I mean, it it sounds like a fucking motorcycle starting up, like it's crazy. And then the guitar on top of it. If if we're gonna choose, I'm gonna go Van Halen all the way. And, I mean, eruption. Some pretty good points. Eruption, that right there. Oh my god! I mean, you listen to just that, just the guitar alone. I don't think you can take a single person from Motley Crue and put them on stage and just let them rock out like that. Something so iconic. I'm not saying they're not great instrumentalists. Like they're all good in and of their own. But you can't put the spotlight on completely on just one person. But you could take the drummer from Van Halen and put him out there, and like during a certain break, just like, hey man go entertain the crowd real well and like just have classic fucking moments where it comes up on VH, VH1's like best drummers you know what I mean I don't think Tommy Lee pops up on there <laughs> you just don't you don't have that I mean if we're talking like specifically VH1 I would actually probably argue with you there VH1 there at least just from, you know, growing up with that channel on pretty much all the time, uh, they are pretty biased. Yes. They are. Yeah, I was never a big H1 person. No, no, I wasn't either. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hated MTV I, had 80s. introduced a only... lot of new music and shit. Like, that's how I found out about Bullet for My Valentine. I, I hated the 80s. The only thing good to come out of the 80s was the th- Thrash metal, one hundred percent. When you're getting Master of Puppets and and <clears throat> Ride the Lightning and shit like that, the underground thrash metal, and then it becomes like major scene in the nineties. Huh? Wasn't ACDC the eighties? Yeah. <clears throat> well, they you started like out ACDC? like late seventies. Did they? Yeah, it was like seventy nine. AC. I don't know the. Yeah. It, ACDC is like the forefront for rock, though. They, they weren't no boy band. They weren't no Motley Crue hair band. Like they were, they were fucking sexual innuendos. Like in, in those songs, like she's got the jack. Like he's clearly talk, talking about a, a sexual disease. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and who knows what else? She's got the jack. <laughs> like come on, <laughs> that's classic rock right there. I mean, you don't. Get, any better sex drugs and rock and roll rock, classic rock singing about fucking i music. if we're going back that far i'm i'm more of a sabbath kind of guy oh you can't have thrash without sabbath <laughs> i'm gonna be with you on that one all the way you can't have thrash metal or anything without sabbath nope oh sabbath is and always will be one of the greatest bands of all time. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. (laughs) If they're not, they should be. I think they are. I'm not entirely sure, though. I know know Metallica's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
I feel like Black Sabbath should be. Yeah, they should be. Yeah, they were one of the ones that led the way for everything. Oh, yep, 100%. Can you imagine I mean, that dark they, kind of music coming they're... out at that point? Like, oh my god, that was probably this is so why dirty. I have been wanting this motherfucker to join up while I'm in here. Oh, yeah, they were, music they were inducted. Music always welcome. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. Hell yeah, 2006, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I I am waiting for the day for Allison Chains to be inducted in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've been waiting for a while. That and Soundgarden. Soundgarden needs to be put in there. I don't know why Chris Cornell's not in the damn Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's got one of the best, if not the best, rock and roll voices of all time. 100%, and I'd say the closest vocalist I've heard so far, just from my experience, would be the vocalist from Highly Suspect. He can almost hit the notes that Chris hit. Highly Suspect's a really solid band. Hey, actually, I have, a, I have a really good question on that. What if you, had a, if you had a choice to pick, okay, between one of these bands, you can only see one of them at the time, <clears throat> Highly Suspect or uh, Bad Flower? Because I, I put them in the same category. I don't know why, but I, I do. I discovered Highly Suspect because of Bad Flower. But, I think uh, I, I would probably see Highly Suspect I've as well because Bad I Flower. think... I like them, but I definitely want to see Highly Suspect because I feel like that'd be... A, it's kind of, from what I've watched on YouTube, it's like kind of new school grunge in a way. And I can get down with that. Well, I think that Highly Suspect is... A, is it's a it's a band where it's got more than just the typical sounds. Like when you listen to an album by them, you can tell they're pulling music from different kinds of genres and kind of meshing it. In a sense, if you really listen to it, one yeah. of my favorite songs from them is uh oh what the hell is it? It starts with an S. Serato- serotonin. Serotonia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. I love that. I love it. That it, it the guitar is just amazing in that, but really uh, I think that's a, that's an underrated. You, say, you just want to stay all day and masturbate in your room alone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see, I have I have difficulty with it though because the lyricist, the singer for Bad Flower, is so good with his lyrics. Those lyrics are amazing. They're dark. They're very somber. But I mean. He really hits it's the lyrics for me. It hits hard. Bad Flower. Do you remember the song? I can't remember when it came out. Blue October, Hate Me. Yes. Uh, Bad uh, Flower is Bad Flower, that band is that song. Like it it's exact you described it perfectly tyler and that's why i would pick bad flower uh personally that side of rock like people that can play a softer like you know more i don't know more it almost kind of feels like more personal yeah it hits you it hits you hard yeah a lot of his songs you know what i mean do that. Like the way he and I he paints a picture for you, and you're like, like you that, submerge sign yourself. me up for it all day. Yeah, I, that would be a hell of a concert, man. It'd be an emotional concert. So I definitely, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna die on that hill with Bad Flower. Fair, I can understand that. Fair. They did. They put on one hell of a show live when I saw it. it was only a thirty minute gig, but well, thirty minute set rather, but. It was uh, it was cool. I liked it. Since we all also seem to be pretty pretty well in agreement on Sabbath, Ozzy or DL? Ozzy, I'm a big Ozzy guy. Same. Yeah. Fucking love. Ronnie James DL. Uh, what about you there, oh. Alex? I have I nothing Ozzy. to contribute to this shit because <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm just sitting here soaking in all the information from you old fucks. Not gonna yeah. lie, my boy's sitting here and we're crashing his monster trucks into my desk. <laughs> that is what I'm doing. 
Yeah, no, dude. I was I almost went to go see Ozzy for the first time ever oh, two years ago. Parkinson's. Yes, and then he canceled his tour the year after. I was, I was so in the same boat. And dude, I will ask see him once before the last stopped. concert that me and were supposed to go to uh, when we lived in the uh, chateau apartment. Uh, was the Chester Bennington? Yes, yes. Dude, we were supposed to go to that one too, and he fucking killed himself a week before. And then the very next one we went to go to was the Aussie one, and that got canceled the first time. So I went to go the second time a year later, and he just canceled the entire tour. I think I heard recently he's trying to tour again. Is he? Yes. I think so. Yes. Uh, he's basically doing like a little trial run right now to see if his health is in good standing. Like, so he, you know, he's trying to make sure he can do it. I don't know that man. But <laughs> on the subject of Chester Bennington, have you heard the two unreleased songs that they have uh, published recently? Was it lost one of them? Uh, lost and fighting myself. Yes, I might have heard both of them actually, and. I, I like them. I'm not gonna lie, but I was never really all that big on Lincoln Park. That was just kind of an occasional. Like, I used to be a I huge Lincoln Park it. fan when I was I a kid. Loved, I loved Lincoln Park just because of Chester Bing. The I, main reason why people fucking dick ride Lincoln Park is just for Transformers. <laughs> no, I just like yeah. Lincoln Pickles. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> well. Uh, uh, so was... you're Michael Bay's biggest fan. <laughs> that was that that era of Lincoln Park, the Transformers, po- Lincoln Park. Park I, I I can't stand that that one. There but was like one or two songs two... out of there that I like. I like their the Hybrid Theory era. Yes, Hybrid the Theory two... and Meteora will never yes. be beaten. Yes. There you go. Best two albums. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Down. I, I can like listen to Meteora the whole way through. Don't even, not even skipping a song. Yeah, start to finish. Start to finish, and I know it by heart. It's I awesome. used to and literally, when, one, when one would stop... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I love the weird, quirky uh, song that they would have in there where it had like a Japanese yeah. type music almost. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, what is that song? Uh, I can't, Damn, I can't I remember. Know um, I know like, that song. Can, I can pull it up. Let me look. Oh, I was just about to do the same exact thing because I know what song it is. As soon as I hear it. Oh, nobody's listening. Yes. Come, come on at you. Come, come on at you from every side. Dude, I love that song. It's just, it yes. sounds weird, but I love it. I love it. Now that to me is Linkin Park. That that's the reason why. And Hybrid Theory. I mean, that's that's. The- Oh, that's OG album. You, you. If anyone says I'm gonna put this album on, don't say no. Just be like, hell yeah, put it on. I'm down. Like, I don't do anything to jeopardize it. I just let it happen. Fuck yeah. And it, it was because early on in in that 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 weird era, you, you know, Lincoln Park, Limp Biscuit, uh, like. You got with um, POD, like mm. they're touring again too. Are they really? Ooh, yes. No, Lincoln, Lincoln Park, Park or not Lincoln Park? Um, Limp oh, Biscuit. Yeah. Dude, I seen Limp Biscuit play. What was it? Uh, a year ago at Lollapalooza. I didn't. Well, I didn't go see them, but I I watched the, I watched the yeah like live, the live recording video. they had. It was cool as shit. He looked like a dad. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a great it was a great concert, and I love the guitarist in that. I I'd mean, love to go see them. They came out of the Attitude era. They're I still love his quirky lyrics, and it's just fun. Like if you're gonna go to a concert to have fun, that's a fun band to listen to. I mean, why not? Yep. Honestly, just because of how wild the shows are, I I want to go to an ICP show. I won't I, lie, that would be actually pretty might cool. Might tag along with you on that one. That sounds like fun, <laughs> dude. I am, I am here for it. I'm not gonna get all dressed up and shit in like the fucking war paint and all that they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go as a fucking juggler. It's gonna be go dope go just to see for like the experience of like to see how the festival or whatever the hell they do is. 
Mike would end up going there and dressed up like fucking Sweet Tooth. <laughs> He'd fit right in. <laughs> and Mike, I'm not just saying that because of your eating habits, I swear. Jeebus. Oh, <laughs> not shaming. Yeah, come on, Lizzo. Whoa. Oh. I don't fucking make people eat my banana. No, dude, she was body shaming people. Have you not all heard about this? Banana? Like lawsuit shit? No. Yeah, this is like, dude, she's in like fucking real hot water right now. She was doing I, some weird ass shit to her like fucking whole team of I just people. Heard, I just heard the Automized banana part. Like frozen bananas and shit. Dude, she was like fucking body shaming people for being like too skinny and making them like do weird shit, locking them in fucking rooms. And that's Trying to cover it up and say that it was just Nutella when it was actually shit. Something, something. God, she the other did direction of shit flavored Nutella. Ew! <laughs> fucking Nutella. This story is just getting Shitty more Nutella. wild and wild as we go. <laughs> fucking Putella. I don't mean to switch it up again, That's but nasty. Um, there was something being said about Nirvana and Kurt Cobain. Mike asked to Casey to elaborate. What was the question? I totally forget. Oh, about uh, how Courtney definitely had somebody do that. Oh yes, dude, Courtney I mean, twelve gauge. I, I mean, dude, the biggest thing. Conspiracy ever... theories. Here we go. No, the, no, this is a this is fact. Like this is in oh, the I mean, investigation so notes and shit. Though. Yeah, I I full on think that she did it too. That man literally had enough fucking heroin in his system to take out an entire homeless camp of junkies. That would like, worse. dude, man was not playing around that night. There was dude, no man. way he would have been able to pull the trigger. He would have been dead. Yeah, yeah. There's well, there's no way he could have done it. I mean, that right there in itself. And I mean, the no, fact um, that I, there's just that's fucking. Did she do it for the royalties? Besides being fucking shot. Do what? Wouldn't the fucking. Uh... Lethal, do- well, I guess it would be a lethal dose. You said he had that much in him. Wouldn't that yes. be enough to kill him rather than him being shot? Like, she wouldn't have fucking had to do anything there. Yeah, but I mean, she played it really smart because of how much drugs were in his system. He was a regular user, a known user, so it wasn't really of any surprise that the drugs were in his system. Well, but you know what out, I mean. He also it? struggled with depression and a slew of mental, like health issues. I, I thought he was bouncing back though. I mean, that's what it seemed like, but because he was that hospitalized kind of thing, for just because. Unfor- well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, you get what you're saying with him seeming like he's bouncing back. Ah, uh, that's something. That doesn't always prove that, you know, somebody's over things. Like in situations oh, yeah. like that, that could be a complete act for all you know. I mean, it's. I just wasn't sure if he was taking that substance, the substances because of the cyst in his stomach or whatever, because it caused him pain. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what led him to doing harder drugs. But. She definitely had somebody hired there because they there was evidence that there was somebody outside of the premises and shit like that. The bitch really, really made out like a bandit. So she got royalties. Oh yeah, she was next to kin. Well, what about of course Dave Grohl though? Does he not get any of the royalties and the basis too? Um. Well, see, I would assume she only gets his portion. However, that was divvied up. You know what I mean? It's not. I. I don't feel like she'd be able to just walk in there and take everything. So, uh, I'm gonna assume she only got his portion of it. I, other than my assumption, I do not know. That makes sense. Can you imagine, like, Nirvana blew up so fast. For the short amount of time that they were on air, they just lit up the scene. Can you imagine what the music industry would be like if they were still here? 
Grunge kind of died after Nirvana, didn't it? Yeah, not quite. Not yeah. quite, no. Soundgarden, Bill well, Jam. You had Nirvana. See, my, fear, yeah. my fear is a lot of the bands that I used to have on repeat all day, every day, like their new stuff, I just kind of skim over it because it just, a lot of it feels forced. So in a way, I, yeah, I would like to see what they would have done for like, the next few albums or so but like if they were still around today you know what i mean like would it would they have stayed true to themselves or would they well, have sold out just I mean, to push if, records if you look at most bands they only really have like two maybe three albums that are absolutely fucking awesome and then they kind of just peter out afterwards well uh, I'm, I'm curious about it sometimes later albums are even better too I the only band I can say, and this is this might just be a personal thing, but I can listen to any single All That Remains song. Doesn't matter which one it is. Well, um, um, I only say this because they were considered the Beatles of their time, Nirvana. And the Beatles, when you look at their track record and where they've come from, they basically were considered a boy band way back when they started. And then you got all these different albums. One of my favorite albums is the White Album. If no one's ever listened to it, you really got to give it a shot. I know it's the Beatles, but there's a reason they're so prevalent. Yeah, I can see that. If um, Have you ever listened to Nirvana's first album, Bleach? Yes. Probably. Like, I, I, uh, there's, there's a lot of tracks on that album that just have those like really kind of trippy out there lyrics. Like, you know what I mean? Like, look at, um, I, I know a lot of the song by heart just because of a kid I went to high school with, but like, I am the walrus. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. I am the egg man. You know, that whole song was really, really trippy and it was really weird. And it's interesting because the Beatles you, have a song you know, called uh No, that was a Beatles song. Uh yeah, I'm the Walrus. The Walrus is Paul or yeah. some shit. Yes. Yeah, yeah some shit yeah. like that. But I'm just saying like the weird lyrics like that, I see some of that in Nirvana's very first album, Bleach. Yeah, so uh, I, I can kind of see where you're see... God. It, it would be interesting to see how that would have panned out from an artistic standpoint because it you're right it is rare for bands to have multiple albums that are good now metallica there's a reason why they've been one of the only bands to play on all fucking continents on on the planet um they play through multiple centuries and they have put out good albums everyone yes now their shit's stale for me nowadays but but yeah, when you I have agree with Kill that. Them all, Force. Kill them all, Ride the Lightning, uh, The Master of Puppets, you had the Black Album. Um, the Black Album Justice was their for last all, good like, album. Those five out, al- there's five full fucking albums. Death Magnetic wasn't bad. That wasn't Which bad. One? Death Magnetic. Saint Anger was I wasn't definitely really my favorite. that big of a fan. <laughs> I <laughs> did not like Saint, Saint Anger. Anger. No, nobody did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> snare, 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 Dude, snare, snare. I'm, That's all you heard. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to stick with my opinion and say the Black Album was their last good album. Uh, well, they, had album few, they had a few Anger, tracks throughout the... At least two you know, or three tracks that I liked. So yeah, I can't really like... Uh, I like... A, well, actually, I do like a lot of their covers from that Garage Days album they did. Well, you also like, I'm sure you like stuff from Load and Reload, which was after the Black Album. Like, wait, Brown King, nothing. That one. Yeah, See, I, mean, I don't honestly cool. really like that song all that much. I know it because it's a very oversaturated song. There's a song that I It's one of those ones like... you hear on, like, hard fucking rock stations. Like, oh, yeah. There's a song. <laughs> no like, shout out. Like, they like, oversaturate like their, that shit. I liked their uh, "Turn the Page" cover, and I liked their uh, yes. that Irish cover. Um, oh god, what was it? Um, they also did a Danzig cover. Yes, that was uh, that was uh, 
That was an that Irish. was awesome. Yeah. I killed your baby. Whiskey yeah. and Gara was a good one, but I don't think that that was an Irish cover. Yes, yes, it was. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's an Irish cover. I forget the band. Stone but Cold that's, Crazy that's, that's, off that album was really good too. I think they had yeah, Unforgiven Two on album. the uh, Reload album, or the Load album. It's one of them. Yeah, I think, I think, think they reload. did. No, and then they had Unforgiven Three. Unforgiven right. Three was on the What's Death Magnetic album. your favorite Metallica song? Oh, <laughs> dude! Oh, come on! That's on. a real hard one. That's way too difficult. I mean, there's moments where I just want to listen to Shortest Straw. Uh, come on, dude. But uh, I'm oh. gonna go with uh, the thing that should not be. That's such a beasted fucking riff. But L- Leper just Messiah is awesome too. Just yeah. because. Yes. I always started out my workouts in uh, high school with it because it was the fucking eight track tape I had with fucking Metallica, and I always started out with Fuel. Oh, so give me fuel, give me fuel. Yes. I was watching pictures of all them with like fucking red afros. <laughs> dude, dude, but let me ask you, let I me ask also want to give a really, really honorable mention to Dryer's Eve. I fucking love that song too. Yeah, that's a good one. What about that song where they had that old lady in the video? La 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 <laughs> you know that you song? Cookies, oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Three, three cookies. This motherfucker is wired. <laughs> <laughs> you know that song, Mike. I know you do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, here's a real oh, question. Yeah, that's one, I can't think of it. Reload album. <laughs> I, I told you the, the load and the reload album are they're not bad. There's some good, good shit listen, on there. I listen to those albums so fucking much. They're good albums for sure. They, they also out. have a really, really decent cover of Tuesday's Gone. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a quick question though: if if you go to work out and you have a choice between one of these bands, who are you gonna listen to? Metallica or Rage Against the Machine? You're gonna go pop one, and you're about to bust out some iron. You're about to just start cranking out weights. Metallica. Metallica. Metallica? Yeah, you're not so listening real. to Rage? Oh, are you kidding me? Rage? Oh, my God. Honestly, uh, Rage for me. Vocal angry, and Metallica is both vocal and instrumental angry, and I can get down with that, too. Yes. Even, even I, currently, I listen to Metallica to work out, too. I just never really got into Rage that much. I only like maybe two or three of their songs. And they're the really? ones that are oversaturated on the radio. I just never yeah. really got into them. Yeah, it's kind of I love same them. for me. Like, I mean, I was during that time, man. The you're lying. I was more you're into lying. like Seven Dust and POD. You're, you're, you're oh, lying. POD. And here's, oh, here's no, I won't like, do what you tell me. Here, here's here's why I'm going to call you out on <laughs> lying, because a lot of people don't realize that Audio Slave, with Chris Cornell as the vocalist, the band behind. Behind him is Rage. You got Tom Morello on guitar. You had the bassist from uh, Rage Against the Machine and the drummer. The only person you didn't have was the singer. That was a side project that, that Chris Cornell did. And you got um, Like a Stone. Um, uh, what the fuck is that one? Hi- uh, highway um, Highway Tune or something like that. Highway Man, something like that. You had a, a lot of good songs with Audio Slave. So, Rage is pretty solid. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm not saying I'm not saying they're not solid. They're just never well, for, for never working really out though. Into... Yeah, they're they're not they're a band. Audio slave, so would that be Audio Slave versus Metallica? Because I'd still go Metallica. If I yeah, were. they're they're not a band I can like put on and be like, yeah, I'm gonna go push this fucking 350 pound boy. Audio Slave no. is probably like something if I'm mowing the lawn. I would think, um, or just kind of chill. Okay, well, what about okay? What about um? um so what about STP, Stone Temple Pilots, versus Metallica? I, 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 You're lifting weights. Uh, still Metallica I'm, for me. Yeah, still Metallica, but that's a closer one. I've listened to that. That's a closer one, yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, dead and yeah. bloated. I mean, who doesn't want to bench press to that? 
<laughs> they got some pretty good riffs. Well, they do. Um, if you're in a somber, if, if you're in a somber mood and you're and you're just feeling it, you're in your feels. I, we've all it's, been there, sitting by ourselves and emotional. You have two bands you're listening to. You can only pick one: Deftones or Tool. Deftones. Ooh, yeah. oh, that's pretty. Okay. I can get down with that. Uh, I like Tool, but I like Deftones a lot more. I, only, I do like I Deftones. really know a few Deftones songs. I'm, I'm just not that into either of them. That's that's actually really hard. I'm going to have to go with Deftones, too. <laughs> Mike, I knew Mike was going to be like, fuck, dude. What's this question? <laughs> if I'm in my feels, I'm probably going to go something a little heavier. I was so happy to, to see shit off of me. Tool get uh the recognition for their their latest album which they were trying people were trying to get taylor swift back on top of the charts but they couldn't do it and tool just made this breakthrough rock album after like you know however many years since they've made an album and people were like what is this old like dad rock it's like you guys really don't understand the polyrhythmic fucking patterns that this these people play i mean you got Maynard on vocals as well, and you got the instruments in and of themselves are all playing in a different rhythmic pattern that, that is so difficult to fucking play in. You can't really headbang to Tool. You you can, but you can't because there's moments where you're like, you you're off. When you're headbanging, you start to be off beat, and you're like, this is kind of confusing, but it sounds cool still. <laughs> it's because it's all polyrhythmic. It, it's one of it's the kind of uh. It kind of reminds me of like Dream Theater. Oh, Dream Theater is pretty. They're pretty good, dude. Well, I mean, dude, I anytime Pull Me Under comes on, I will not skip that song. That is such a I banger. I wonder why Dream Theater is not really on the radio because they're one of the they label one of the best bands ever for in- instruments yeah, and shit I like mean, that. I'm honestly not really sure, dude. It's probably better. They have some of the hardest right fucking um, um, songs to play. I believe that. Um, because I had to do a uh, I had to do a report on Dream Theater in my music class in two thousand eight. Yeah, I had to do a report on Sex Pistols. I'll talk about dildos. Sex right? Pistols. Yeah, I just put a big picture of a. Big floppy black dildo on the front page of my. You know that uh, is. I gotta, weird, con- I gotta confess something. <laughs> I gotta confess. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh, god. This is the wrong time to be confessing. Dildos. I gotta confess something. I'm telling you, I absolutely love Imagine Dragons. I can listen to them. Yes. Yeah, I feel I like they would be like a few of their songs. And to see them, like I would love to see them live. Um. I've seen a couple of clips and stuff. I've heard they put on a great show. But there's this one song they came out with. Um, and I actually really, really like it. Um, oh, my God. Let me see what the fuck it's called. Son of a bitch. It's kind of hard. It's like, it's a harder song. Mm. The Viagra. Is it me or is yes. the newer rock just kind of like mid? I like guess not. It is. I I completely agree with that statement. Like, dude, like, we like grew up out. in the golden age of that kind of rock. I mean, dude, think about early Nickelback, yes. like Silver Side Up, and dude, people talk so much shit on Nickelback, but their early albums are so dude, they're fucking fir- good. Their first like two, like three or four albums, dude. I jam them all day, any day. Yeah, I have so nothing. Now I will say though I am not a fan of Chad Kroger. That no, dude is a pretentious a, asshole. Yeah, he's a flame and douchebag, but they're I'm really, really glad that Corey Taylor puts him in his place anytime that's brought up. <laughs> because oh. like if there's one person in that in that world that you don't talk shit on is Corey Taylor. I love that Corey dude. Taylor. That dude is I I'm a fan of him personally. Yeah. Like at all his projects, like I love Stone Sour, I love Slipknot. Yes, I mean Slipknot's really what got me into 
anything heavier. Yeah, Slipknot was my door into heavier rock. And Stone Sour, I don't know. I love Stone Sour. It's just like a softer, like if I'm not feeling something hard. Dude, if you listen to like some of their, like their first album, the one that has um, Through the Glass on it, there's a couple tracks on there that are just like very poetic but they're seriously dark and then he goes off on the there's one track it's just an audio track of him going off on this like it it i feel like it is a poem but it's like just a slander poem on the government and shit here we go um the imagine dragon song is called cutthroat two years ago the other song that i like by imagine dragons is friction that's a pretty good one that's from a good the one too, Smoke yeah. and Mirrors Deluxe. It, and you know, a lot of people, they they put rock in a category, and I don't think you really can. I mean, if you can put, There's so you know, Ice Cube guys. and, yeah, if you can put Ice Cube and Dr. Dre and all them in a, into Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, then, that, that, and, and that's hip-hop. Like, there's different kind like rock is something that legit rocks you. That's the, it's the only way to describe it. It rocks you. And I, I well, think they, Imagine Dragons they, is one of those modern rock bands. I will call them rock band they, because they will rock you in a lot of different songs. Like they'll get you going. Didn't they just induct them and then went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame too? Yes. Did they really? but if you get, yeah, I think yeah. I thought I saw something yeah. about that. You know, I've actually, within like the last few weeks, come across like three brand new country artists that are absolutely kick ass. Did they try that in a small town? Um, <laughs> no, they did not try that in a small town. Um, the one guy, uh, his name's Nolan Taylor. I've heard about him. Yeah. Yeah, he's. I don't even know how to describe that dude except well actually all of them really and i think have, it's why i've like drawn myself to listening to them a lot lately have they have listened, that like go for it have you listened to aaron lewis's country it's not bad if you like older style country well see that's if you want real old country look up um what the hell is his name Coulter wall Coulter wall how do you spell it uh c o l t e r oh just the way it sounds yep just the way it sounds okay uh the, look up the song the devil wears a suit and tie and it's that dude sounds like he has been smoking marlboro reds and doing shots of jack since he was in the womb like he oh. has that really like old like kind of outlaw raspy just deep voice. I have to put him on my list on Monday when I go to work. I've been looking definitely. for new new shit to listen to. Mike. Yeah, he's Mike. he's definitely got it going on. What? Please please look up what? this song and listen to it right now. Yep, right now. Right now. It's only it's only two minutes forty three oh, seconds. No. The performance video. Oh, well, it should come up anyway. Oh, but... You want me to watch the video? Well, you can just listen to it too if you want. It's fine. Okay. Who am I looking for? The Imagine Dragons. It's called Cutthroat. Oh, okay. Let me know what you think about that. Fuck it. I guess I'm going to listen to it too because I don't know shit about Imagine Dragons. I heard their one song that was like super popular. Radioactive? Was, uh, Through the Flame. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of a different Imagine Dragons. I'm no. sure there's only one, bud. Maybe. The song is cut through. Right. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Did everyone just search it? <laughs> I'm listening to it right now. Uh I well I'm actually uh I'm logging into my Spotify. So, 
Um, Tyler. Have you listened to Sleep Token? Yes. How do you feel about them? They're bringing something new to the table. Dude, they're bringing heavy-ish music into baby-making music. Yes. That's what they're doing. And they they took the. Uh, I can't skip it. My opinion. It's good. Yes, in in my opinion, what they're doing is very similar to what Nirvana did in their music. You had very soft, um, um, verses, and then their chorus hit very heavy and hard. But they're taking that concept, right? And they're almost you almost listen to a whole fucking three minute, four minute song of heavy heavy shit, and then it just changes the dynamic completely to something a little softer. But it's like way more coherent, more poppy almost. And you're like, whoa, what just happened? I kind of like it. It's 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 awesome. And that's one reason I like Nirvana. It's one reason I enjoy li- listening to stuff like that because they have dynamics in it. They change it up. They took that idea and are running with something that not a lot of people fucking look into. Like, whenever I'm making music, like trying to write my own stuff, I try and come up with similar type shit where it's a little lighter on the verses and stuff. Not lacking on the verses, but more like you know, a softer tone. I have something for yeah. you to look up right now. Okay. Let me know when you got your music streaming oh, application oh, open good sir look okay. up uh the dude's name is witches but it's a z instead of an s mm-hmm. uh go into his uh, uh look up you're looking for the witch on youtube okay i'm an idiot you're talking about them, and I thought you were talking about Dragon Force. <laughs> I was like, you mean through the flames, right? No. Yeah, no. That's, Dude, I thought it was pretty good, yeah. They are a really you like good it? band, though. Yeah. But you don't have to lie. Yeah, I, like I, I like it. I mean, it's not exactly my taste, but I can't say it's bad. No, it's pretty good. I've been listening to too much heavy shit. It doesn't do it for me right now, but I need to go back and revisit it whenever I'm in a mentality. I like that. I like the... Is that like a fucking drum? Or is that... Like a synth? Yeah. The beat it's keeping through the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I like that kind of drumming. Are you listening to that track I told you about? I just don't like the real high vocals. It's kind of shearing. Was it called Witches? The uh, the dude, the artist is Witches with a Z. And you'll look for the witch demo. Chilling out to some jazz piano. Instrumental right demo. Uh, not the instrumental demo. Just It should just say the witch demo. It might just be the witch on YouTube. I don't fucking know. Yeah, yep. I found this dude... Uh, which is I found him like a year or so ago on TikTok. He did a really, really cool cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, he's also done a cover of Running Up That Hill, but he did a Johnny Cash cover, and damn it, I wish he would release it. I hurt myself today. Yes. I heard it. It was pretty damn good. Dude, it's fucking awesome. Wish he would release it. Wow, this is definitely different. Yeah. But dude, it's like I I love it. I haven't heard much from this dude that I don't like. Like it's it's got a really dark tone to it, but it's still like upbeat. I mean and honestly, I kind of like the weird vibes the dude has in his music videos. <laughs> dude, I've had Avenged Sevenfold's cover of Retro Vertigo stuck in my fucking head. You know, I that's one band it. I wish I liked, but I 
No, nine inch nails, dude. Oh, I was, I was gonna, gonna say, say what the every, hell? Is every, no, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, dude. Everybody does nine inch nails better than nine inch nails does. <laughs> dude, <laughs> fucking dude, David Draymond did a cover of Wish, uh, when he did that uh, side project device. Dude, it's fucking awesome. And then I go like hear the original come across the radio or something. And I'm like, ew, <laughs> turn it off. Like, dude, Johnny Cash did their shit better than them. Which I mean, it's not really that hot. Like, I that's really not anything out of the ordinary. I feel like, but nine inch nails. Just, I don't know. Did you have you I, ever I, like listened? Have you ever like listened to a cover, and then you hear the original, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, that's fucking original." <laughs> you know, that's that's the only way I really know any pop songs nowadays. There's two oh. band. There's like two bands I follow, and they always have covers of like the newer like hip hop shit. But uh, our last night and Fame on Fire. Like I'm, I'm talking about <clears throat> older music, like. Like uh, fuck, Five Finger Death Punch is cover of the House of the Rising Sun, and you hear the actual I hate, song. I hate five Finger, finger Dick Punch, no, dude. Um, honestly, <laughs> I like <laughs> I like Five Finger Knuckle Shuffle. I like their first like few albums. Yeah, like, the first three albums are cool. American like, Capitalist, it kind of sold out after. Yep. Now they're. Way of the Fist, their first album, yes. dude. I jam that all day, every day, every single track. The one after, if that they would have stayed bad. like that, I would still be a fan. The way after, the one after that wasn't bad either, but the American Capitalist just got kind of poppy, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, well, that's whenever they started doing like the bonus tracks that were like dubstepy and shit because Skrillex yeah. was big then. They're, you know what? Their shit uh, here lately hasn't been bad. But everybody you know was doing that then, though. Asking Alexandria did it. Um, fuck, who else? Bring Just Me the Horizon did it. Fucking Corn did an entire dubstep album back then. You know, I yeah. bought that album just to literally beat the shit out of my sound system <laughs> the in the Cobalt. And yes. It did a sufficient job at it, too. If anyone's going to collab with that. Skrillex from the rock world, it should be Corn. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I, they did. that would be cool. I thought I'm, they did. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. They did. They did. Yeah, yeah. What the hell was that fucking song? It was on the radio like all the fucking time. Uh, I can't fucking. It was something cannibal, wasn't it? I gotta look this up now. <laughs> no, the song title was "Get Up." Yeah, that's right. <laughs> was "Get Up." Yeah. Uh, okay. I think it was the album name. I'm gonna name five finger death punch songs that I actually like. Um Bad Company's not not bad. I like yeah. the cover of Blue on Black. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one's pretty okay. I like I like a little bit off today. I do like, like that one. Um that one's good. That's why I never yeah, it's good. it's not bad. But one of my favorite covers they did was the offspring cover. That's one of my favorite songs. I think that's one of you the know, best cover songs I've ever heard. I I agree with you. I really, really liked that cover. I know a lot of people didn't, but I was a big fan of that. Which I think that? it's better than the original. Um, um, I'll tell you. Okay, yeah, there was another one. It was Narcissistic Cannibal. Uh, Gone Australia. Away. Called Gone Away yep. by Five Finger. Yeah, Gone Away. I don't know if I heard that one. It is one uh, of Tyler? the best covers. <laughs> Tyler. Yes. There's another song of theirs you should look up real quick. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard it before. It's It was like a unreleased thing that got released years later. But it's uh, the song's called The Tragic Truth. That one, I I think you'd actually really like that one. It's It's one of their softer ones, but it's like an early softer one. And it just... It was when they were still good. So you don't like anything off the way of the fist, Tyler? 
I mean, it's not bad. Not even. And like I'll, I'll, I'll say that only because, um, is, I'm, I might be thinking of something else. Um, what's that song where he's like, uh, Captain America? Are you off to fight the bad guy? Oh, what is that? That's fucking, that's <laughs> fucking American capitalist. That album was. No, crazy. that's one of their like new songs. No, that. That was American Capitalist, wasn't it? No, 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 no. This is one of the off their like latest album. I know what song you're talking about. I just don't care to listen to it. Uh, because Captain America, you ought to fight the bad guy. Someone, um, dude, right? They've been political yeah, since fine. American Capitalist, though. They have, been. and I think that's what honestly turned me off from them because I just get tired of politics oversaturating everything in america and system of a down did politics yeah. probably the best with their music Which yeah one's the wrong yeah. side of heaven the wrong side of heaven that's the and then there was the righteous video. side of hell oh are those the albums yeah oh okay those weren't terrible maybe i haven't listened to the first uh two albums or whatever the first two albums were The Way of the Fist and um, War is the Answer. Was the yeah, I don't album. think I listened to anything off of them. Go and look up White Knuckles by Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, now, another cool Punch. thing I will say about them, though, uh, back in 2014, I saw them at the Baltimore Arena. And right before they started to play White Knuckles, Ivan Moody got up on stage and got every kid out of the crowd, like right in the pit, brought them all up on stage, and then proceeded to have all the adults beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> but it was really cool. Like the kids got like free merch and shit, and they got to like, you know, fucking go up and have a good time. Oh, Ivan Moody's a good dude. Yeah, he, he is. I still can't believe it's really hard for me to believe, though, that his sister is the singer for OTEP. Who the fuck's OTEP? You never heard of OTEP? Oh, no. Jesus. They actually did a really brutal Nirvana cover. They got really political, too. Dude, see, and that's a lot of music has gone political over the years. And I think that's why I just kind of phased all of the old shit that I used to listen to out. I've not heard anything political in the deathcore I listened to. Me neither. I Me mean, neither. I wouldn't be surprised okay, so. if there is something out there that is political in deathcore, but as I'm, as I'm, wow, did they I'm used to play them. faster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to be good. Yeah, they, their first two albums were <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> good. <laughs> I wonder they don't play it on the radio. Yeah, I don't think anything on this album really got to the radio except for Stranger Than Fiction. No, Stranger Than Fiction was more is the answer. The uh, the bleeding was the only one that really got on the radio from their first album. Was it? They really Did changed their yeah. dynamic up a little bit. Oh no, 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 wait! Stranger Than Fiction was. I'm sorry, that's my bad. But yeah, so it would have been Stranger Than Fiction and the bleeding. The bleeding's what took them out, like to the moon at the time. Are any of you guys into like the, some of the hipster music? For example, I'll give you an example. I was going to say that, define hipster music. Is, does anyone like cake? Fuck is no, I never even I heard just of ate it. Cake today. Cake? Uh, there's a song cake. called "Going the Distance." Check it out. I'll look it up. I, I want to know. know if you guys I like know. It. I know the song, and yes, I like the song. <laughs> He's going the <laughs> distance. He's going oh, like yeah. to speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That's cake. Um, yeah. um, they also are the... I don't know if anyone remembers the show, but it's called Chuck. And uh, the uh, beginning of the show, the theme song was from Cake, and it, it's the song's called Short Skirt, Long Jacket. The uh, instrumentalists, um, they took the in instrument... I'm sorry, the instrumental from that song and made that the 
uh, theme music for, for Chuck. I don't know if anyone remembers that show, but that was back in like 2007. Chuck is, uh, uh, if anyone's ever seen Shazam, the main actor for, for that plays Shazam is the main actor for Chuck. I uh, do I've not recall. Of, I've heard of Chuck and I've heard of Shazam, but I cannot recollect watching either of them. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. I got one for you to listen to. Go to, okay. you have Spotify? Or YouTube? I don't know if they're on YouTube. You have Spotify? YouTube. I, I don't have free range of Spotify. Got nobody in the to drop to. Let me go check YouTube real quick. I have a good one for you guys. Seether or Stained? Uh, I don't really. That's, that's, that's really hard because uh, that's a hard one. a lot when I skated. That is a hard one. Seether, I'm gonna have to go tough one for myself. I have to go Seether because you know, honestly, is just great. just because just because I have a man crush on Aaron Lewis stained. Whoa! <laughs> I, think I mean, Finnegan I was gonna I was gonna follow and... up my statement with. Go ahead. Um, I, I, just, I I love his voice. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm a fan. Into my ears. I'm a fan of Aaron Lewis himself. I don't really like his arrogance on stage. I never saw like when he I uh, dude, I've seen so many videos of him just like being an asshole like uh, on stage just because you know people are they're doing their thing, having a good time, really. Oh, I didn't see any of that shit. I just like his music. Yeah, he. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much where I am. But he can, he can be the quite the royal cockbag. Do you guys uh, watch Young Sheldon ever? You have. I've seen a lot of clips from it. My wife watched it. You ever like the intro, the theme song? Okay. You know who's whose band that is? That's Steve yeah. Burns from Blues Clues. Really, <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah, oh hey out there, it's me, Steve. Like it's Steve Blue. Songs, uh, Mighty little man. Yeah, it yeah. sounds different in the intro of that, but yeah. Dude, do you guys remember a couple years ago when he resurfaced and made that video? Yeah, yeah. I love and all the, everybody all the was making like, everybody oh, he's was ruggy, he's dead. Like, everybody no. was making the meme when he of uh, when he made the comment. I never forgot. I never forgot <laughs> you. I kind of yeah, made yeah. that meme with Cuervo and the damn son picture. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, why? I got a, I got a picture for, or yeah, a picture. I got a band for you to try. Uh-huh. It's called "If Not for Me." Oh, you mean Patty Cakes? Yeah, they're it's Patrick they're Lover's music, band. Their music's actually pretty damn good. Yeah, he's oh, Patrick Lover's Patrick's, band. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, he's I doing, baseball he's, with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. I used to go to his like band practices in high school whenever his band was called In False Remedies. I remember that. Yeah, I was good buddies with uh his synth and backup vocalist, I think that's what he did. I was good friends with him and Votech, old Jake. Oh yeah. I feel like you name dropped there though. Wasn't there a last name? Yeah, but I'll just edit it out. It'll be fine. Okay. Why not give him recognition for his music, though? Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. Seriously. I mean, his he promotes himself. I mean, he promotes himself on the internet, so, I mean, I'm I'm cool with giving him the credit that he deserves. Yeah. Because he actually, that kid is pretty talented. Yeah, he's talented. I, I can't really get with his music, but he, you know, I'm not gonna say his stuff's bad, just because, you know, he, he you plays can tell there's talent like. there. <clears throat> oh yeah. But the singing, like the singing that they do, like that, it's it's so it's difficult. It's not easy. No. No, it takes people, like, years of practice. I hated hearing the guttural noises and stuff like that from vocalists like, like that, but as you you know, submerge yourself into playing music and stuff and then understanding how hard it is to do certain things, there's a technique to sing like inside your throat like that, down low, 
low, up high, because if you don't do it right, you tear your vocal cords and you you can you can make them bleed and shit and like fuck yourself up. So that shit's difficult. Isn't that what, isn't that what happened to the Ben Sevenfold singer? Uh, something like that. Yeah, he had to have a surgery. That's why Ollie Sykes oh, yeah, has gotten pretty tame with his vocals over the years. You know who kept? I'm sorry. I just got I just got super stoked for because I want to say this. You know who kept their voice super clean over the years? I mean, I'm going back to Thrash. Okay. It's crazy to hear. Uh, fucking. Oh my god. The name just went out of my head. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> south of heaven. South of heaven. Um. Slayer. Raining blood. Slayer. Jesus Slayer. Christ, how can I forget that? His, his vocals, dude, he sounds the exact same even today. For how yeah. old he is, to have his vocals that good, that dude took care of his you voice. You know who else? The front man from Anthrax still sounds really good. Yes, he does. Well, he had more of an 80s tone. He used more of a natural voice instead of trying to be like... You know, yeah. you got those those thrash metals where like you're kind of screaming... I mean, well, see, he kind of he kind of reminds me of Iron Maiden a little bit. Iron Maiden mixed Just with the, Dio. Yes, because he kind of like really holds on to his words. Yes, I do, dude. I love Madhouse. Madhouse. I mean, I'm obviously Honestly, it's a, Anthrax one had one of the most. Um, Anthrax. I think. Out of all thrash metal, they're my favorite. And it's kind of funny which song got me into them. It was a collaboration done with a bunch of hip-hop artists uh, from the 80s, like Flavor Flav and... <laughs> fucking Flavor Flav. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, no, it, uh, I'm sorry. Public, they called themselves... It was Public Enemy. Wow. Uh. But the song, the song's called "Bring the Noise." I'm serious. Uh, that song, yeah. that song used to fucking rattle every single fucking window and mirror in the Cobalt with that intro, Mike. That's something you should look that up right now. I mm-hmm. think you. It's called "Bring the Noise" by Bring Anthrax. Noise. By Anthrax and Public Enemy. The best part about this song, I'm sorry to cut you off, Tyler, oh, is they guy. come in so fucking heavy with the drums and the double kick, and then all you hear uh-huh. is Flavor Flav going, yeah, boy! <laughs> 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 yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs>